Hello everyone, Richard Hunley, David McKeever here with another Ask the Broker show. Today's show we're going to talk about are we headed toward a bubble and what the heck is a bubble? <laughs> David, can you answer that question for us? What is a housing bubble? Housing bubble, yeah, let's define that. <laughs> what is a housing bubble? Well, it, a housing bubble brings me back to what happened in everybody's mines back in 2006, 2007, where home prices rose so rapidly in the year or two before that, that it couldn't sustain itself and ultimately popped. And the reason why it popped was the market was built up on bad loans from people who truly couldn't qualify. And when they were, were unable to continue to make payments, that's when the housing market popped. The bubble had popped. So um, the, the, the bad loans created a situation where anybody can afford to buy a house. Yeah. So there was so much demand for housing that it caused prices to rise too quickly. Now, like I said, when, the, when uh, they weren't able to make the payments, then it, right. as fast as it went up, fast as it went down. So people, as the market went up, they refied themselves too. And I hear That's the true. term, they refied themselves right out of their home. Is that what that means? That they were able to refi two or three times, pull money out, now they owe this much, versus they used to owe this much and they can't yeah. really afford it anymore? Yeah, they were using yeah. their home as a ATM machine, just okay. constantly pulling out money. So, so that's... So are we headed there? That's the major question. Are we heading to the bubble? Because the last bubble, prices rose up really fast, and we've seen that price appreciation yeah. here recently, the last yeah. you know, 24 to 18 months. So the question is, are we in another bubble? And I think we have to look at the reasons why prices are going up now versus why prices went up back then. So why have prices gone up differently this time? Well, two things I think of is um, great interest rates, bringing out more buyers, mm -hmm. and um, lack of inventory driving the prices up faster than normal. Yeah. Is that kind of... Yeah, exactly. So th this time around is basically a I'd call it a supply and demand issue. When there's a lack of something, like lack of toilet paper on the shelves during COVID, <laughs> there's going to be some price gouging. People are going to charge more for toilet paper. It's the now, same I've, I've thing. I've got my trunk full right yeah. now. We're good. Um, so it's the same thing as for housing right now. There's a lack of homes for sale, and it's caused home prices to go up. Okay. Now, are we at the point where this bubble is going to pop? Are, are we getting there, or what do you well, think? Well, if you, like, I recently went back uh, a couple weeks ago and looked at what the high, highest median price in Stockton was back in 2006, 2007, which is the peak, and what the median sold price is today. Mm -hmm. And we're still under that price for about, about 5, 5, 4%, somewhere right in there. So we still haven't reached the peak as a city as a whole, um, of, of the price peak in, in Stockton. And I look at, I look at my house, um, what it was appraised for at the peak and what it would sell for now, and, yeah. I, and I'm still not there. So there's a little bit more room to go up. But yeah, same, same with my house. Mm -hmm. so my house was built in 2005, and I saw where in six or seven, I don't remember what year, that it looked like it peaked. Yeah. And right, my house isn't up to that value yet either, so that's good. That means my house is going up more? Potentially, if, if the supply of homes stays low. Now, I did what, I saw an interesting quote that I want to read to everybody. It's um, from Lawrence Yoon, or Yun, Yoon, I think his name's pronounced. He's the chief economist of the National Association of Realtors, and he was talking about this, this this topic here, and he said, you know, such a frenzy act of activity reminiscent of 2006 raises questions about a bubble and the potential for a painful crash. However, 
the answer, there's no comparison versus, you know, 2006 and now. Yeah. Back in 2006, dubious adjustable rate mortgages taxed many buyers' budgets. Some loans didn't even require income documentation. Today, buyers are taking out 30-year fixed rate mortgages. Uh, 14 years ago, there were 3.8 million homes listed for sale, and home builders were putting up about 2 million new units. Right now, in today's market, inventory is only about 3. Point, or I'm sorry, inventory is only 1.5 million homes, oh. and home buyers are underproducing relative to historic averages. So that basically summed up everything we just talked about a moment ago. What you said a little while ago, that this is kind of, we're going up for, I, I guess, lack of words, maybe for a better reason. You know, it's a more natural it's reason. It's a natural economic yeah. reason of yeah. supply and demand and not bad loans. Now, I don't think around here that we're close to our, let's say, the bubble yet. But what's your thoughts, and I'll give mine too, on maybe other parts of the nation. I think there are parts of the nation that will hit their bubble soon or maybe hitting it already, and they might drop off. But any of us, like our area that's driven by a richer area such as the Bay Area or outside of L.A. or outside of New York or wherever, they probably, like us, have room to still go up some. So it's going to be funny while some markets maybe are, the bubble's popped, we're still going toward our bubble. Well, I wouldn't even call those major metropolitan city price decline a bubble. Prices are going down because there's less demand. There's less people looking. There's more people moving out of those areas looking to buy elsewhere. Because of the price? Because of affordability, yeah. yeah. Okay. So prices could decline in those cities because not because the prices are too high, but there's just less people maybe looking to buy. So San Francisco, which is sky high, will start declining soon, and we won't because some of them moving out of San Francisco might come over here and buy a home. Potentially, yeah. That makes And right sense. now it's uh, more so affecting the San Francisco rental market because a lot of those renters yeah. out there are moving out here to either rent more affordable homes or either, or either buy their first home. So it's actually caused the San Francisco rental market to decrease 10, 15% already. And they could have a payment over here on purchasing that's less than they're paying over there for rent. Right. Wow. I think that kind of sums up that here we're still gonna have a pretty good market for a while. Yeah, it's stocked in, is, we're gonna continue to have people moving into the area, causing a demand for either rental housing or demand to purchase homes. Um, and as long as that demand's there, then you know, it's gonna hold going. it's gonna hold prices either steady or keep going up. Yeah. Good, good. Well I like hearing that about our market. We're still in good shape. And you know, looking at some of the numbers we do the trends every month, I wouldn't be afraid to say that this year we've gone up somewhere around the fifteen percent area, which is three times more than that national average. Well, it'll be interesting to see once, you know, the final December figures are out, where we started, where we ended, and that will be our housing market year-end show that you guys will need to watch in the first part of January. Yeah. Be a good one. Yep. I think 2021 locally is going to be pretty good, everyone. Well, that ends our show today and podcast about is the housing market reaching a bubble? Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Please hit that subscribe button down below so you'll be notified on our next uh, shows each and every Friday. And we will see you next week. Thanks for watching.